We're in Florence, South Carolina at Clemson's PD Research and Education Center. I'm speaking with Jonathan Wyndham, who's one of the specialists here. And Jonathan has established a germ repository for roses. And this right. ties in with some research you're doing for your master's yes, degree. So um, here at the PD-REC, I'm fortunate enough to pursue a master's degree and my project focuses on rebloom in rose and peach. So this rose repository ties into my research at the REC. And let's talk a little bit about what the rose repos repository is. So a repository, any repository, is a living collection. So if something should happen to a certain specimen in someone's garden or a researcher's garden, they could ask for material from someone else who has it in their collection. So a repository is just a fancy word for collection. And here we have some really unique things, yes. some things that don't exist anywhere else in the world. Exactly. So some really cool hybrids from private breeders, some wild species that were sent here from other countries. We've got a little bit of everything. Let's talk about three or four of them before we okay. get into the other part of what we're going to do today. Awesome. Um, one is the swamp rose, yes. and it's in full bloom right now. And it's one of our natives, and I love swamp rose. Um, it's a North American native. It hasn't been used much in breeding, but it's got this really great fragrance and excellent disease resistance. And the name of that one is? A Rosa palustris. But you said even though palustris just means marsh loving yes, and it can take wet feet, it can ha take sandy soil it's too. It's happy pretty much anywhere, and so, but it'll spread like wildfire. So if you don't mind that, it's a good one to have in your yard. Now how about this thing from India? How did you get that? <laughs> Rosa cymosa. That was sent to me from a breeder, private breeder in California who received seed from a breeder in India. So you can't really import live plants to America. There's like a two year, uh, two or three year. Uh, quarantine. Quarantine, yeah. thank you. And so, but seed, it's fine. So this seed, the Rosa Simosa, it came all the way from India and now it's here in South Carolina. And it's a wicked plant. This, oh, it's awful. Those recurved <laughs> thorns. But yeah. the disease resistance is yeah. great. Yeah. So, and one of the hybrids that we have, it's really cool. It was sent to me from a private breeder in California and it's a hybrid between two roses. The mother rose was called Playtime, and the father is Soft Legs. Woo. So it's the hybrid between Playtime and Soft Legs. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make some hybrids. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, let's get started. We're gonna start off with this wonderful yellow knockout. Sunny knockout. Okay, and then we're gonna transfer the pollen, collect the pollen from that and transfer it to that. So um, tell us how we're gonna, let's actually show how to do okay. it and talk about how it all works. So, for the first step in plant breeding, whatever your plant is, you're going to need to collect pollen. All right. And pollen comes from these specialized structures called anthers. All right. Uh, flowers have male and female parts, and so the pollen is the male part of the flower, the anthers. This is a good stage to collect pollen from. You see the buds uh, not quite open all the way, and we do this because the anthers uh, need to dry out and release the pollen, and but we don't want that for a control pollination. So they're still uh, the anthers are still closed. All right. They haven't yet dehissed. And dehiss means release the pollen. Yes, ma'am. So you can think of the anthers like uh, little bean bags. And so inside of those bean bags are pollen grains. When the anthers dry or dehiss, they split open and release pollen grains. Okay. So we're just going to tear this flower apart. We're going to remove the petals. So we're getting down to the actual sexual structures of the plant Correct. that are on the inside. So once you've removed the petals, uh -huh. look there at they that. are. Whoa, look at those fellas. So these are the anthers, uh -huh. and inside these anthers are pollen grains. And as on many plants, in this case, they're yellow. Correct. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So we're just going to use a pair of scissors, and everything we're using today can be found at a drugstore. Sure. So tweezer, tweezers and scissors. And I'm just going to scrape those anthers into this way boat here. And we can see that those grains, the, the, the holders of the pollen are falling down into yes, the bottom. The, the anthers. The mm -hmm. anthers are falling down there. So and the pollen is contained inside them. Inside these anthers. Okay. And so if we're going to use the pollen, you need to collect the pollen uh, before you actually get ready to do your cross because these need to dry, mm -hmm. we said. So see, we've removed all the anthers. Yes. And then the center of the flower is the female part. Yes. And we'll get to that later. Okay. So this is from the yellow knockout rose, and we're collecting the pollen. So we're okay. going to let that sit for 24 hours and dry. Okay. And now we need to get, um, and you've already kind of done some of that, I think. Yes, ma'am. I've already got some pollen prepared for All us. Right. So the anthers, these anthers have been sitting for 24 hours. All right. They've dried, but now they're dehissed, and they're ready to release their pollen grains. 
So you funnel your anthers into a little glass jar. Baby food jars work great. Mm -hmm. And give it a little shake. And or since it's South Carolina, I say pimento cheese. Pimento the, cheese. the jars that the pimento is going to exactly pimento yeah. cheese. Okay. Give it a little shake, and that should release the pollen. Oh my goodness, I see it's getting a lot of yellow dust in it. And that yellow dust is actual pollen, not the anthers. Okay. And oh, that's see what we'll that be using. Right. So you see the bottom of the jar I here? I sure do, covered with it. That's actual pollen. All right. So it's fine to leave the anthers in there. It's not going to hurt anything, but we want the actual pollen. Yes, we do. So we're going to set this aside okay. now that we have that, and we're going to prepare our mother flower. So now we need to get down to the female, the stigma, Correct. inside of one of these pink knockout roses. So again, we're going to start by removing all the petals and the sepals here. And this time we're not cutting it off because it's got to stay on Correct. there. Correct. It has to stay living. Just like animals, plants reproduce with a male and female to produce offspring. So you can think of this uh, mother plant exactly like a mother animal. She's going to need nutrients, water, everything to develop seed. And of course, what roses, their fruit is called a hip, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, ma'am. And they're very high in vitamin C. Mm -hmm. You know, the British people used that as a vitamin C source during the Second World War. Oh, did they? When they couldn't get fresh fruits. Uh -huh. You can make rose hip tea, and it's very high in vitamin C. I've seen the rose hip jelly. Yeah. And that looked really good. Uh huh. And of course, we know the British love their roses. Yes, ma'am. Why they try to grow roses in a place that's so humid, that's really a challenge. And that's really one of the fun things about some of the research you're doing that you and other people are doing here because these Native American roses seem to have beautiful resistance to leaf spot. They do, and especially swamp rose, it uh -huh. will grow in standing water. And still not have black exactly. spot. Exactly. It's yeah. one of the few roses that will. Well, hurry up and get that research yeah. done so we can have some of that in our gardens. So you see the more petals, the more problems you're going to have getting uh -huh. down to the female parts. All right, we're getting there. There we go. Okay, so we have. And we are very fortunate because since the flower was still tightly closed, we know that those anthers haven't dehissed. Exactly. And there's been no chance for self fertilization. And no pollinators have come by That's and true. pollinated. Okay. So after we've removed all the petals to deter any pollinators yes. from visiting the flower, we're going to remove these anthers from the mother plant. So they can't dry and release pollen. Correct. This is a process called emasculation. So we are removing the male parts of this flower okay. and leaving only the female parts. So this is the um, spay and neuter clinic. Pretty much, yes ma'am. Yeah. So just be patient and be careful not to cut away this. And it really is fortunate that the female structure is usually right in the center of the flower. Clustered right mm -hmm. there in the center yep. away from the male structure. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure to get all of the anthers that are the male parts away. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you've done a pretty this good job clearing them out. There we go. So this flower has been emasculated. Okay. And these things that remain are the female parts of the flower, mm -hmm. the stigma. And that's where the pollen will be applied. Yes. And then beneath that, the swollen structure, um, it has an inferior ovary and the Correct. eggs are down there. Yes, ma'am. So you're going to apply the pollen. Mm -hmm. The pollen will make pollen tubes and grow down through the stigma exactly. to the ovaries and fertilize the eggs. And exactly. That's where fertilization occurs. Yes. So pollination, pollination and fertilization are two separate, separate things. Steps. Yes, ma'am. So we're going to pollinate. So this is our prepared pollen. Okay. I'm just going to open the jar. And some people will use paint brushes. I use my finger. It works just <laughs> fine. So I'm just going to reach in and uh -huh. get some pollen out. Got a nice yellow finger. Yeah, you can okay. see the nice golden pollen. Uh huh. Then I'm just going to touch those stigmas there in the center and leave the pollen. Voila. Well, and that's, Pollination. that's it. The first that's step. all it takes. Okay. That's pretty thorough. Once those stigmas look like the color of the pollen, you know you've got good amount on there. Now do you have to cover it up or anything? No ma'am, once you've removed the petals, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about pollinators yeah. coming by. But the important thing is, it's labeled. Aha. Uh -huh. So we know that this is the one we want to come back to Correct. when we are going to look for the fruit. Exactly. And, and so the fruit will contain the seeds. Which is the hybrid between the yeah. two bushes. And I think you've got an example of what that's going to look like right over here. Awesome. Yes, so if your cross was successful, if mm -hmm. pollination occurred successfully and then fertilization occurred successfully, the rose will produce a hip. So this is a hip. Mm -hmm. And this one is actually successful. Just like an apple or um, a pear developing on a tree, it goes from green to whatever color it should be, the red, the orange, or the yellow. This has developed a beautiful, ripe color. And so we're actually going to cut this open and show you what the seed of a rose looks like. 
So we're just going to remove this from the mother bush. Her job is done. We've got this beautiful orange hip that you're welcome to eat. <laughs> I'm just going to cut through. Careful not to cut yourself. Well, it's protecting it from it things is. that want to eat it. Deer and Japanese beetles. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. So you can see there's a pretty thick rind yes. around the hip. The flesh. Yes, uh -huh. flesh, uh, the flesh. Mm -hmm. And inside are the actual rose seeds. And technically, roses don't have seeds, but for the sake of this, we're going to call them seeds. Okay. But botanically speaking. Can I help you with that? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. So if you want, you can just pry them. Well, out I'm going to hold it and let you use your your young eyes <laughs> to get them out. How about that? So, just like an animal giving birth, we're just going to reach in, pull out the seeds. Whoa! Look at this. There we go. And it looks like this hip only has two fully developed seeds in it. Okay. So wow. there we go. Okay. And now the mystery part, because. At this point, you plant these. That's the fun part. You have no idea what you're going to you get. You have no idea. No idea. Yeah. Jonathan, if people want to know more about the exciting work that's being done over here at the PD Research and Education Center, have y'all got a website or someplace they can go? Yes, ma'am, we do. It's clemson.edu slash public slash PD. Well, I want to tell you, it really is fun for me to get to come over here and see what you behind the scenes people are involved Thank in. Thank y'all for coming out. It's awesome.